Welcome back to West Texas View. Welcome back to the West Texas View. Dr. Bobby Jane was talking about some of the ways that we could prevent uh, Alzheimer's, and that's a really big thing. When you're 74 years old, you really want to know all of those kinds of things about Alzheimer's. So, uh, uh, Dr. Jane, uh, summarize what you just said. There were seven things that you gave us, right. and you started with smoking. So, we were talking Stop about, smoking. yeah, we were talking about some of the preventable measures that you can take uh, preemptively to uh, make sure that you don't have. I, I, I do want to remind again that. Um, that genetic makeup, your genes, particularly genetic if you have, is, it is has very to be a factor, a major it's factor. A, it's a ma big factor, particularly if you have your first degree relative, blood relative, uh, diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Uh -huh. The more relatives you have diagnosed with Alzheimer's, uh -huh. the more you are at risk. Uh -huh. um, so the modifiable, so called, so called modifiable factors that can, are they are shown to affect. Um, um, I mean, to, up to half the cases of the world's uh, Alzheimer's include the following. Number one is smoking. Okay. Number two is depression. Uh -huh. Number three is uncontrolled diabetes, so you need to control. Number uh -huh. four is hypertension. Blood pressure. Blood <laughs> pressure, yeah. Number five is um, your... Um, uh, exercise. exercise. Physical, physical exercise. exercise. I mean, real physical exercise. Um, physical exercise and um, depression. depression and obesity. Uh -huh. And the seventh one was the most important was to increase mental activity. So engaging in tasks that challenges your mind, uh -huh. memory functioning, um, tasks that require your organization thinking, uh, games like chess or uh, s uh, solving a crossword puzzles, uh -huh. learning new languages, those are known to be helpful in keeping brain active. The more you keep your brain active, so here, if you don't use it, you lose it, applies very, very, <laughs> <laughs> very, very Pay aptly. me now or pay me later. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's something I would say. Uh, well, another uh, issue that we had a lot of uh, comments about was infant mortality. And uh, he, w he was going to give me a little uh, a bit of study that was done on infant mortality and, and how, strangely, the United States is lagging behind other countries in that. Oh, this was a quite surprising um, global study um, where we compared the infant mortality. What means is that um, how many deaths an infant would be described as a from childbirth to one month of age. Okay. Well. Uh, neonatal infantal uh, mm -hmm. infant. Uh, uh, how many of them are dying because of and because why this is important to know that because the infant mortality rate is a reflection of a number of different things, including the kind of uh, perinatal health. Prenatal, um, right. uh -huh. uh, Prenatal and perinatal and uh -huh. postnatal health available uh, to the, uh, and also a good reflection of how good a society is functioning and how good our medical services are. Uh -huh. So it, it, it reflects um, things on a multiple levels. Uh -huh. It's not just a figure. Uh -huh. So we f this study found out that U.S. has uh, infant mortality of 4.3. That means roughly about, I would say, five kids um, dying per every thousand life births, which uh -huh. is very One out high. Of a uh, five out of a thousand. Five out of a thousand uh -huh. uh, kids are dying um, for various reasons. Some of them are preventable, some of them are not. Uh -huh. Most of the deaths are probably preventable. Now, they didn't break down to social, psychosocial strata, didn't break down into regionals. They just took it as a country. Uh, the reason it's worrisome is because, as I said, it reflects multiple things. Plus, we are falling behind a number of other industrial, uh, industrial countries, particularly uh -huh. the Scandinavian countries in uh -huh. Europe, Western European countries in Europe, uh -huh. who spend much less dollar amount per head, per capita, uh -huh. on healthcare than we do, uh -huh. and are able to get much better results in, uh, in this parameter. Uh -huh. So it does reflect, uh, which, will, which may not come as a big surprise, that our healthcare system needs to be tuned in uh -huh. some way or the other uh -huh. because the results showing that we are not getting the most bang for a buck uh -huh. that we are spending towards health care. Uh -huh. So uh, this is something I want your viewers to be aware of that, um, that we are still struggling. Um, in fact, we are sliding back compared to other countries, other developed countries in terms of how many infants are dying of um, 
preventable reasons. And so it didn't even go in, in this study, it didn't even go into the ages, of, for example, of the mother. No, uh, no, the, no. Again, they were, I think they, what they did was um, across all spectrum. Just took statistics. Yeah, statistics of the all spectrum of, of uh -huh. units born. Of course, uh -huh. I'm sure they have eliminated the high risk ones and uh, the, the, the aged mother or very young mothers. But in general, once the baby is born intact, um, how long the you know up to one month what are the chances of the baby dying within a month uh -huh. um, that that is a very sensitive indicator uh, mm -hmm. of not only medical services the social services the prenatal internet yeah. it, it reflects a lot of things so that's why it's very eye-catching plus just the attitude of society because the attitude of society is uh, wh when a, a woman's pregnant, she just take care of it, whether she's got the money for Probably prenatal not. and all those yeah, other kinds right, of right. things. Right, right. We do have Medicaid, Medicare system which provides blanket coverage. Uh, that makes us think that uh, the dollar amount we just spend are much more than anybody else in the world uh -huh. does it. Uh, but uh, there's something we are lacking that we, we are not able to get the best results. Uh -huh. um, be it the inefficiency of a medical care system or uh, we're lacking something. Uh -huh. We don't know. We're lacking something that needs to be addressed. Which, which again, that's the reason that we need to pay attention to things like this. Right. Is to say, wait a minute, we've got to delve a little deeper into that. Right. right. Well, tell us some of the other issues you wanted to, to, to touch on. Well, uh, I, I do want to bring up the issue about um, seeking mental health yes. uh, services. Uh, of course, Texas Tech is very limited. I'm the only psychiatrist here. We're actively trying to seek additional psychiatrists, but because um, psych trained psychiatrists are uh, in demand, <laughs> in demand and difficult demand. to uh, find, um, so we are still here. So uh, uh, there is some waiting time, but, uh, but I, will, I do want to uh, approach your viewers that I am available uh -huh. uh, through email or with uh, telephone contact. Uh -huh. And uh, if not me, there are a number of different psychiatrists in the town. Uh -huh. Uh, please seek help. Um, the more you push it off, the worse it becomes. That's right. Um, and, uh, um, and, and, the, and one of the things you said in your very first program is that uh, there's a difference between psychiatrists and psychologists, but that you very often work in teams. Right. And so many times it's a matter of you're seeing them, and prescribing the medication, and then uh, uh, sending them to, to a psychologist. psychologist. And, and that's probably the lesson that we want to close this program on, is be sure and call that number that's on your screen right now from, uh, to access uh, Dr. Jane and, uh, and get some information and set up an appointment. And then from there, you can uh, go on with the, the uh, care uh, and, and knowledge that you'll need. And uh, we want to thank Dr. Jane for coming in again and sharing some of this information with us. It's always so good to see him, and we'll hope that he'll come back another time. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us for News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. This has been a public affairs presentation of KWAB-TV and KWES-TV.